Dr. Dana Tassone talking with participants in HFT 4295, a capstone course in an undergraduate hospitality management program. And this is, is about chapter five, which has to do with value-added management through productivity. It's, it's important to know that you, in a course such as this, everything is building block. So you will, things you have heard about in the first four chapters, you'll hear about again in the remaining chapters, but you'll hear about them from the standpoint of actually practicing them. And what I would like for you to think about, think of yourself as, or see things from the perspective of a work unit manager, a person in charge of a work unit. And you want to put yourself in the shoes of that person and identify how you would use the skills to do the things you need to do. In this case, we're talking about value-added management, which has to do with productivity. Productivity is a model that you had before from an informational standpoint. And in this chapter, you look at it in a, from a reference of <clears throat> actual practice. And so if you take a look at, uh, and, and value-added management, you already know, or you already know a few things that you need to remember. You already know that management is the accomplishment of objectives through the activities of others. You know that management takes place in an organization, which is a collection of individuals brought together for a common purpose. And you should know by now that value-added managers add value to the organization through the area of their responsibility. And how do they do that? They do that by understanding and in working within the productivity model, which is both linear and nonlinear. You take a look at figure 5.1, it uh, identifies the linear process of inputs, transformation processes, and outputs. You, <clears throat> you know, what are inputs? Inputs are those factors that give you the, that get put into a transformation process, and the transformation process will then yield the outputs. The outpeel, outputs are, are the outcomes associated with trans transferring, transforming inputs into um, something new. <clears throat> in inputs, in, in any organization, the inputs are material resources, human resources, technology, and money. Those are the four resources that you have. When you talk about resources, you need to always think about efficiency, uh, getting more for less. And then those resources get put into a transformation process. The transformation process then yields your outputs, which generate revenue and hopefully profit. And your outputs are measured in terms of quality, quantity, and customer relationships. When you think about outputs, you think about effectiveness. Remember, efficiency is doing things right, and effectiveness is doing the right things. The goal is to, in productivity, is to balance efficiency and effectiveness. If you get too efficient but not effective, then that's not productivity. If you get too effective but not efficient, then that's not productivity. The trick is to keep those two things in balance. Now the linear model you could learn in, in any business school will teach you that model, but what you haven't or what you wouldn't be taught in such a, an environment are the invisible nonlinear factors that influence this process and those factors are the meaning systems and the learning systems. Those are the circles around the linear process and I would explain to you what those are. The meaning system is the organizational culture and the learning system is learning from experience and from new information, historical and new information. So what I give you then is a, a description on page 99 of service enterprise production systems. Remember I told you that service enterprises are much more complex than manufacturing enterprises. In business school, the, we learn about manu from a model of manufacturing enterprises in our industry, in the hospitality tourism industry, our business is so complex at the delivery level, the level of, of guest interaction, um, that we need to have a more thorough understanding of multiple systems working in, at the same time. So I talk to you about, I give you a model, I, I tell you all about that, I really encourage you obviously to read all of this. It's, it's 
you know, it's good information, and you know you won't get it really anywhere else. And um, so, in Figure Five Two, I talk about you know service enterprise um, systems, production systems. Production is not productivity. Production is the accomplishment of something. Productivity is the efficiency and effectiveness associated with those. And I give you uh, five um, service transactions that occur. Um, the service transaction with the guest client is a hub, and around those we have maintenance, delivery, production, and repair transactions. I go into a very detailed explanation of what those things are. Um, I then talk to you about the sequential steps in, in production systems, which I already told you are very common in manufacturing settings. I simplify it for you and I give you a, a description of these service systems in practice in service enterprises. So then I break it down. I, I show you the inputs associated with the productivity model, which has to do with finance, procurement, human resources, and technology. So you have material resources, which comes from a procurement, you have human resources, which uh, comes from uh, the human resource acquisition and maintenance of uh, human capital, which are employees or associates, and you have technology, which is both hardware and software, that streamline uh, transformation processes. I'll explain to you very specifically how those, those factors, those inputs, those resources go into your overall model. I talk about the the materials management aspect, the people's management aspect, and the technology aspect, management aspect. And you know that the goal when it comes to inputs is efficiency. It's, it's you know, doing more with less. That, that doesn't mean um, necessarily buying the cheapest products or procuring the cheapest products. You all know that's a mistake but you want to buy products, material resources, at, a, at an, an appropriate price uh, for transformation into outputs. Remember, the lower, you, you, when you lower efficiency then, and, you in, and you increase um, outputs, if you lower inputs and increase outputs, the cost of business is inputs, the, the, the revenue from business is, is outputs, then what you're doing is you're enhancing productivity. You could also lower the cost of inputs and maintain the level of outputs. That's enhancing productivity. Or you could maintain the level of inputs and increase the outputs. That's enhancing productivity. Where do the answers lie? They lie in the transformation process. And that's why you have to be a systems thinker as you learned in Chapter 4. I talked to you about people management a little bit. I'm going to talk to you more extensively about it in future chapters. I go into an explanation about outputs and transformation processes. Um, I then give you some, some tips on how you become a value-added manager and, and, and the perspective that you have to use. The figure 5-7 tells you the things I just told you about enhancing productivity in terms of inputs and outputs. and um, and that is how you become a value-added manager. So, why is that important? Well, <clears throat> you take a job as a work unit manager. You need to establish your value to that organization almost on a daily basis. Nobody's going to go in there and watch you and say you're doing a great job. You have to tell them what a great job you're doing. What establishes value? What have you done to improve the organization in terms of Enhancing profitability. How do you enhance profitability? You enhance it through revenues and resources. What's the relationship between revenues and resources? It's lower re inputs, lower resource, lower the cost of resources, and increase when, where you can the cost of outputs. Where do the answers lie in the transformation process in most cases? And that's why you you must be an individual who can see into an opportunity to enhance an organization in real tiny bits on a daily basis. We're out of time.